play the long points as well as some of the other natural play quarters. She's having some real short points here. <laughs> but even flashy players need to know what they're doing on the court. What's their purpose? Uh, how are they trying to set up the point to win it? I don't see a lot of thought going on right now. The only danger there was whether or not Gabby might hit the net with her racket face. Of course, you lose the point if that happens, and I've done that before playing Gabby. <laughs> you have? That was a good memory. Well, with all the spin, you mean? <laughs> Back in 85 at Hilton Head, one of my last clay court matches. 40-15. Five was a, you know, a real turning point uh, and a huge event for Sabatini. I mean, she beat three top ten players, and Pam, you were one of those three. I was the first <laughs> of the three. I was the quarterfinal match, and then it was Maleva, and then she, uh, that's right, she played Chrissy all on the same day to try and fit it into national television. Oh. Yeah. Nice looking serve. Gabriela Sabatini. A five love lead. She still only lost one game in this championship. Tasha Long, Betsy Nagelson, have a look at the two backhands from these these two. They are so similar. Uh, in fact, Garocha Tegi, I, I think, really did try to imitate the Sabatini backhand. You can see they have extreme grips, and uh, they just get tremendous racket head speed through the ball, excessive spin. Sabatini, and as she really throws her right shoulder way around, Garocha Tegi does not quite get the uh, excessive follow through. So aggressive, huh? Well, she obviously hit rock bottom in Hilton Head after uh, the second match when she had the match points. And sometimes it just takes that kind of a rock bottom to just hit stride again. Mm. That was that was a uh, excuse me, Pam. That was against Leah Girardi, a little known player from France. Oh! Sabatini had three match points and uh, couldn't close it out. Sabatini. That one stayed in. She was a qualifier, and uh, she she had the best week of her life. But it was a it was a, a very different day than than the type of uh, conditions that uh, Sabatini is playing in today. It was a very heavy day. The balls got extremely heavy, and and Sabatini could just not make uh, any penetration with any of her ground strokes. it so well it looks uh, you know she takes her racket back and from uh, from this high position uh, she looks like she could top spin it and she just slides the racket under the ball and gets some good underspin and the good news for Ines she's won two points in a row she's has a lead in the game it's 30 15 I think Hirochitegi 
the doubts are in her mind, uh, you know, about her knee. I know it's still a little bit tender. I, we, I asked her about it yesterday. She's normally so quick around the court, and she, uh, it's her left knee. That's the knee she'd slide on. And uh, Sabatini just doing a little bit of the same. Good drop shot. For a, for a winner, 30 all. Frustrating for Garochitegi, I know. I mean, she, her, her career is young. It's only a, a little over four years old, and she's already been out twice in her career uh, with injury, both times for eight months. Had a wrist operation in 92 after the French Open. Set First point. Set point, yeah. Inez started the match with an interesting decision. She won the toss, elected to receive. And I always think that maybe shows a little bit of an attitude, like you're, you're not aggressive, you don't feel as positive as you might. Although when Sabatini's serving, I think a lot of people want to see if, if she can serve up the goods. <laughs> called wide so second set point for the second seed backhand slid right off the service line. That's why it gave her some trouble. A bad hop. And, well, that set took 22 minutes. Eesh. As they say back in Argentina. <laughs> and Inez taking her time. She's gone to the back wall and uh, just trying to get herself together here. Trying to stall, Pam. <laughs> well, except, you know what? You never know. I know Gabby knows that. <laughs> in the serves. That one, 96 miles an hour. We've seen Sabatini uh, bend them in at uh, yeah. less than, the, uh, less than the, the speed limit here on Amelia Island. <laughs> we got signs around here, 23 <laughs> miles per hour speed limit, 21. I mean, all these crazy... What do, who regulates that kind of stuff? But uh, no, Sabatini's going for it. shore up your confidence after two tough weeks. It's something like this. Just to make her feel pretty good, just one game in five sets. She really wasn't uh, that disappointed uh, after her loss at Hilton Head. <coughs> than the tournament directors, yeah. anyway. Another love game from Gabriella Sabatini. She's cruising. Cora Chitegi still not on the scoreboard against Gabriella Sabatini. Not far from this stadium court is some beautiful surf. And ESPN's award-winning coverage of the America's Cup is back starting Monday. You can watch both the Challenger and Defender Finals in the Defender Series. All three boats are still involved after an unprecedented agreement. 
That's Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, and we have a mighty Mary right with us as well. <laughs> That one uh, caught the line. She's made an awful lot of unforced errors off the forehand side. She's up to nine. Sabatini is uh, that last ball stayed so low there are other times with a big topspin it's way up high it's you're hitting it in all sorts of different spots you never really get grooved Just not deep enough. Gave Sabatini plenty of time. She loves the backhand down the line. It's good to see Gora Chitegi trying to do something different, but she needs to do it a little better than that. 15-30. So two great points for Sabatini. That's the case when nothing's going right and you haven't won many points, you, you tend to go too close to the line. I mean, she really had plenty of room there. She didn't need to cut it that close. from Sabatini. And still a break point. and took his time thinking about it, though. A little bit of a late call. That's the other thing that can start to go wrong. And everything goes wrong. Get a couple of bad calls. Georgia Great anticipation to, uh, from Georgia Tegi. She's gotten herself in a little bit of trouble. This one here, she reads correctly. She's there, kind of makes a stab swing, and the ball finds itself just inside the sideline. So she's saved a couple of break points, and now she's got a game point. Her first. Yeah, her first one. Let's see what she does with it. That one, Sabatini, to draw to deuce. Sabatini's been doing a good job of going behind Orochitegi and uh, 
didn't quite get balanced enough to throw up a, an aggressive or an offensive lob. So her one game point dissipated. Back to Deuce. Coming up. And after, excuse me, Matthew, it's a nice little clenched fist, like a little yeah. bit of emotion after that point. I think she needs to get a bit of emotion in this. There's no anger, there's no, like, nothing. But there was something. You can speak to that because you yourself were always so sphinx-like out there. <laughs> we could never tell just what on earth could be going through your mind. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember your temperament, Mary, but I don't think uh, you were the poker-faced <laughs> one. Oh. I would do. I, I was balloon folding in between points. Second deuce. Trying to keep the people entertained. She's put together uh, some, you know, her best tennis in this one game. She does have a lot of games. She's very talented. She has all the shots. You guys are making it sound though that she's not, she can't be a grinder. She's got to, her flashy stuff has got to start connecting. And it has in this game. Exactly. She, you know, she's grown up on this surface. She, she's comfortable on this surface, but she really does have a good a game for a faster court. She looks like a slasher to me. That. He's got a game. We may even have a match. One all, set two. This match was going to be a.